This is What Douglas Dug from a Gardener's Notebook, douglasewelch.com. First today, how to build an inexpensive cold frame in under 30 minutes with no tools. I came across this on Pinterest, I believe, and it's an excellent method of recycling stuff you may have around your garden, your small farm, your home, whatever. It includes nothing but straw bales, which you can get at the local feed store. And yes, even here in Los Angeles, we have a local feed store where you can buy straw, hay, and other products. This person also had a series of six old windows that they were then able to lay across the top of the straw bales, creating a cold frame that they could use throughout the winter. Now you'll notice here they built it over top of one of their normal garden beds and it just allows them to get some productivity even into the winter months. I recently talked with a viewer from Ohio, my home state, and he actually grows veg all through the winter just by using uh, plastic and other row covers to protect the plants. Now you've probably heard of guerrilla gardening, but I don't think you've ever heard of it on this scale. Now guerrilla gardening, if you don't know, is basically ad hoc taking over of abandoned and otherwise, otherwise derelict properties and turning them into something productive, whether it's planting them with flowers, vegetables, or whatever. Well, up in San Francisco, there's some guerrilla gardeners that are going around actually grafting fruit-bearing branches onto non-fruit trees. Now, as you know, grafting is not a perfect uh, tool to create something like this. Uh, a certain percentage of the grafts will not take, but I think it would be totally amazing to be walking down a city street, look at an otherwise ornamental tree and find apples or something else growing off of it. What a crazy idea. I'm not recommending you go out and necessarily start grafting fruit onto your city trees, but you know those folks in San Francisco, they like to think ahead. You've seen other examples of this in A Gardener's Notebook on the blog and also in the videos, but it's a great way. I love the idea of turning a mailbox into a backyard toolbox. I've often said that keeping tools near where they actually do their work is one of the easiest ways for you to get work done in the garden. I know some of us enjoy working in the garden more than others. Some of us, like myself, like to spend more time looking at our garden than working in it. But having the tools right there in this attractive mailbox, you could do all sorts, and there are all sorts of mailboxes out there. You could even buy a very extremely decorative one from a local artisan, and it would be a great place to store your trowels, your pruners, and other small tools. This topiary from Costa Rica simply amazed me. I love topiary in general. Uh, I understand all the work that goes into maintaining it which makes a picture like this all the more impressive. Here's a complete alley made of overarching topiary bushes. The bushes were obviously tied together. These look like two plants, one on each side. They were actually tied together at some point in their youth and they broned together entirely and then been shaped into these fanciful structures. I can just imagine wandering under these topiaries and just being amazed at them up close as much as we are simply by looking at the photos. Here's another garden project that just knocked my socks off. We often hear of sculpture in the garden, but how, how about sculpture made from your garden? This looks to me uh, like a sculpted face, which I've seen in other gardens before, and I can't tell if the hand is actually sculpted or not, but it might be. Then earthworks have been built up to make the rest of the figure. This is uh, entitled Mud Made, and it's from the Lost Gardens of uh, Heligan in the UK. What an amazing thing to stumble across as you're wandering about the gardens. Now certainly most of us ha don't have a space this large for something uh, as dramatic as this in our gardens, but it does give you great ideas for something you might be able to do. There's been some pictures I've featured in the past that have basically grown in furniture, a sofa made from turf and other things like that. Might be more doable in your garden, but this is something that's amazing to look at. And again, I can w just imagine wandering through the garden, wandering down this little path and suddenly coming across this. What a dramatic piece of artwork. Here on a smaller scale and something that perhaps any of us could achieve is just a simple topiary courtyard. The balance between the rounded objects in the center, probably box, and the various hedges, the ivy on the left, the hedge behind, the hedge on the right, the square against the round, the rough 
against the smooth, the gravel uh, overlayment of everything, making it look neat and tidy, and then topping it all off, the little centerpiece of the pot in the middle, which can obviously be planted in a variety of things throughout the seasons. This is something you could do down a small alley next to your house, in the back corner of a garden, off your back porch, almost anywhere. Now, of course, it's more work to do something like this. You have to keep everything trim and neat and tidy for it to look its best. But if you're that type of gardener, this might be a great example of something that could go into your garden. I seemed to come across so many amazing things last month while I was sick. I guess I was spending more time on the computer since I couldn't really do much else after my surgery. So I came across a lot of neat things. This table, again, just knocks your socks off. First of all, the Core 10 steel, the rusted steel, is an amazing statement in any garden. The living green of the garden against a hard manufactured rusted steel of the Core 10 is just always an amazing look. I've seen it at the Getty, I've seen it elsewhere, and I, and I do love it. Then you take this to an entirely different level. First of all, you make it into a table, a dining room table, where you can have large parties come out and eat right in your garden, something that all of us probably love to do throughout the summer months. Then you raise it up another level and you make most of the table a succulent planting. I can it would be amazing to sit here and have dinner and look at all the plants up close and personal. And of course, succulents lend themselves to this type of environment. I'm assuming this is in a warmer climate somewhere so that the, uh, the succulents don't have any trouble surviving here. Then again, you look at the final touch, which is the waterfall, the little rivulet running through the middle of the table into the uh, river rock catch basin there. I don't know what else I can say about this except wow this would be something that would just be amazing to have in your own garden, perhaps on a smaller scale. In fact, I've seen smaller types of things like this that you could actually probably do yourself. You don't have to make it out of the steel. You can use other products. You can use concrete, for example, and then use uh, perhaps flagstone as the base of the rivulet or something like that. Again, I look at pictures like this and they just give me hundreds of ideas each time I do it and I hope they do the same for you. Now I don't have a lot of hanging plants in my garden, hanging pots as it were. I have one big one though on the end of my porch right by the front door and it does get a bit heavy lifting that pot on and off of its hook uh, and in fact it's in a very awkward position so you really can't even easily get to it. You may have seen me moving that pot around in the video about creating your own potting soil and repotting the geranium. This uh, easy reach plant pulley, there's a brand name it appears to be here, would make things a lot easier, especially if you had lots of plants and especially if you were older and perhaps had limits on how much you could lift above your head, how much weight. It's a ratcheting mechanism that you hang from the hook, the plant then hangs in the lower hook, you pull on it and like a window blind, it retracts back up to the ceiling. Now, I'm assuming these are all rated by weight. They all probably are able to attract up a certain amount of weight, but you can visit the website. In fact, all the links for the items I talk about today will be listed in the description of the YouTube video and also in the text of the blog post that accompanies this video. So if you see anything you like, you can simply go to the blog post or go to YouTube and click on the link there. Now here's another take, a lower end take on that whole succulent gardening table. Here, succulents have been planted in our amazingly creative piece of work lately. It's become a favorite of lots of gardeners and lots of people on Pinterest, the humble shipping pallet. In this case, a section of the pallet has been pulled up to make a small gardening bed filled with soil and then planted with succulents. Add a couple of legs to this, mounted against a wall, whatever, you could end up having a table, kind of a diminutive version of the big succulent table we saw just a few moments ago. I'm a sucker for cottage gardens. I love English cottage gardens. I think they're wonderful. I love their wildness and their rampantness. I don't have the ability here in California without lots and lots of work and lots and lots of water to really turn something out like this, but I'm allowed to dream. And perhaps you live in an environment where a cottage garden like this is a possibility. Now the one idea that I did get from this that I may try and implement very, very soon is this overarching climbing rose. 
I've had the idea of planting a climber to go and frame the front of my garage. It's a rather bare area otherwise, and uh, yet it's a very big expansive area where a rambler or a climbing rose could have easily get purchased and feel free to ramble all over the garage. I would of course prune it back each year as necessary, but I think it might be one idea that I can take from this and implement in my own garden. I've showed you a couple of these in the past and I wish I knew of a place where I could get uh, something like this. These thin sliced tree trunk rounds. Now back in Ohio I know there's a sawmill up the road where I could have gone and had them made for me probably cheaper than you could ever think of buying them. Uh, I do love the look of the wood at, used as paving stones like this. Now yes, in most cases these are not going to be very long lived. Um, they are going to be subject to breaking down. The harsher your weather, the damper your climate, the, the less likely they are to last for a long period of time. But still, even with that, because they're not cemented in, they're not uh, permanently affixed, they're easily to pull up, replace with a new round if you needed to. Now in this case, I don't know if the person had uh, just not finished a project yet or what, but I would have filled in around the various rounds, probably with a wood chip. Uh, we used wood chip on all of our paths here in the garden. We finally did that conversion and I'm very, very happy with it, especially since we've had some good rain that's really knitted it together and really put it down and made it into a true path instead of just a bunch of wood chip laid on the paths. I would probably scatter those in between and use them to knit the whole uh, path together. Um, wood on wood, what a great idea. You could also use something like decomposed granite or GG to fill in around something like this. And to talk about plants a little bit for a garden, I've been talking about hardscape a lot this, this month, but I came across this picture on house.com, H-O-U-Z-Z.com. They have lots of design and architecture elements there, but they also have regular focuses on gardening and things to use in your garden. And they came across this great plant, the paper bark maple. First of all, I love maple trees. I grew up with them in Ohio, and I, I really miss the fact that we, they don't grow well here in California, so we don't have very many. There are a few in my neighborhood, but, but not very many at all. Um, the paper bark really makes this a amazing uh, piece for your garden because in the summer, of course, you've got the beautiful tree, the beautiful bark anyway, and then in the winter, you have this lovely character of the peeling bark coming off of the trunk, uh, even in the winter months when all the leaves have dropped. Here in California, we have a native plant called manzanita. It's also called ribbon wood because it does a similar thing. Its bright burgundy stalks also peel off its bark much like this. And you'll often see that used in native plantings and native gardens here in California, and I do like it a lot. Unfortunately, don't quite have enough sun here in my garden to grow manzanita and other natives like that yet, but we might be making some movement in that direction. And finally today, every garden needs a wonderful entrance. And here is yet another example of using recycled materials, in this case old wooden doors, to create a gate for your garden. A gate for the garden can be practical and it can help keep animals out. Uh, if you have dogs, uh, it can um, help to isolate and mark off one part of your garden from another. Perhaps behind this door would be the vegetable garden and your decorative garden is on the other side, whatever. Um, the act of crossing an entranceway, of crossing a threshold, means so much in your home and in your garden. We talk about gardens, larger gardens, especially having different rooms. Well, what a great way to establish a room in your own garden, using something that otherwise would be thrown out. Well, thanks again for watching What Douglas Dug. I hope you have got some great ideas from the things I've found over this past month. You can find out more on the website, douglasewelch.com. If you want to go directly to a gardener's notebook, you can add AGN to the end of that. So you can go to douglasewelch.com slash AGN, and that'll drop you right on a gardener's notebook. If you like this video, please click the like button on YouTube. It directly affects how many other people see these videos in the suggested videos at the end. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, keep digging.